Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. That's it. I can't. I can't get this right. Hey, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. I'm sorry. We had to start the whole thing over again, so we got a good recording of the video. Uh, I, 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 but I'm just. I'm. I'm losing it. I am just losing it. But let's make a call here. Okay, everybody. Let's uh, let's uh, let's do what we do every now and then. Rather than just start talking to somebody, we call them because they always start with a funny quip of one sort or another. Here we go. Here we go. It's ringing. It's ringing. All right, I'm ready. I'm high on life, and I'm wired on gas, base, and coffee. Let's slay this puppy. <laughs> <laughs> mm, U-Ban, yeah, yummy. Yeah, yeah. You, what? Are you drinking U-Ban? I'm drinking. What am I drinking? It's a uh, special blend from Dunkin' Donuts. Do, <laughs> it's very good. Do they, well, Dunkin' Donuts coffee is supposed to be like the best. Oh, it's real good. You get like a nice little bag for six bucks and five scoops, and you got a nice big fat cup, and you don't blink for three hours. It's wonderful. Really? It's that good, huh? Oh, yeah. Gone are the days of the mirror and the razor blade. You I'm, just eat some good old Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I must be getting really old because when I wake up, I'm tired, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't wake up refreshed. I always wake up tired, <laughs> okay? Yep. And then and then I so I, I discovered this thing called Starbucks Plus. It's double the caffeine. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> Super no blinking. Yeah, Get x-ray vision with that shit. You can see into the future. Yeah, yeah but the, the fact of the matter is that... I, uh, it doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to be as good as some other coffees that I'm drinking. So you know, uh-huh. I prefer the my of all my coffees. I prefer Pete's. You know, Pete's is good. I like Pete's. Yes, yeah. I have no argument there. Pete's is very and, uh, good. But yeah. uh, for a good cheap buzz, Dunkin' Donuts will do the trick. You buy a bag of it, you take it home, and it's off the Never Never Land, baby. Now, do you buy it pre-ground or do you grind it yourself? Oh, you know, no, I I don't have the patience or the know-how. To uh, grind the beans. Last time I tried doing that, I uh, accidentally started a fire. Last time I tried that, I actually, last time I tried that, I accidentally started a war with Malta. I'm not good with electronic things like well, that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what the problem is here at my house. I can't get the <coughs> bean version of any coffee. Uh-huh. We do mm-hmm. have a grinder, okay, mm-hmm. but my wife uses it to grind marijuana. That's better. Good for her. Yeah. You got so, a smart woman there. So, my is, so if, I, if I try to grind the beans in there, they come out <laughs> tasting like pot, you know, because it's been oh, years yeah. of using this grinder. <laughs> hey, my kind of coffee, yeah. Yeah, I hope, I hope if my wife's listening, I'm not revealing anything, and I hope the police aren't at our door to arrest us because in New York State, marijuana is still illegal except for medicinal purposes. And uh, you have to have cancer before you can have. Oh, uh, that, well, that blows! You got to bring back David Peel, man. He'll help make it legal. Good news. Bad news is you got cancer, but the good news is you can now smoke pot. Yeah, thank mm, you, thank okay. you very I'm much. Thinking it over, <laughs> Governor Fucking Cuomo. Why is it that in what is it thirty states now across the country it's legal mm-hmm. for recreational? I think for yeah, thirty eight states. That's a lot. That's the majority. You know, no, the I, whole I, country I, should go I don't way. think they're all for recre- I don't think they're all for recreational purposes. I don't uh-huh. think so. Uh, but they certainly are for use uh, medicinally and here in new mm-hmm. york we have it medicinally but the in order to get it you've got to dis- prove so much you know you should just say hey i i've got a bad cough you know uh, and, and I, I can get it i just i you know i just don't understand it why have they always seemed that they had to like say bad horrible <laughs> things about a really okay drug you know? Yeah, I know. It's just it's insane. In California, if you want to get it medically, you say, I stub my toe. Oh, okay, here you go. Like, oh, man, I got like an oblong filter. Oh, I know about it. Here I you mean, go. We should, New York, you got to like show them, show them the tumor, you know? We should, like, at, we should at this point, though, say to people that if you smoke pot, 
according to conventional wisdom, you will jump out of buildings thinking you can fly. Uh, you will um, you will uh, kill your child because you think it's it's a, a, an invading burglar. Yeah, oh, the God, things the like that. Again. You know. <laughs> well, years ago, I got together with a bunch of people. We found this film that had long been forgotten, and it was called Reefer Madness. Oh, of course, we all know that one. And so uh, I was working with a group called Normal at the time. Sure. And, and uh, we decided to have midnight showings of Reefer Madness at a theater in St. Mark's Place. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where it first became very popular again, that film. And the film to us was just an absolute riot because what it did is it bespoke all the things that were not true about marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Be jumping out of buildings and murders and running people over in your car. I'm red hot, Jack. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, it's all the reefer's fault. And, and, you know, I mean, there's always been this myth about marijuana, and there's only one reason why marijuana is illegal. Why is that, Alex? That bastard Harry Anslinger. That you got it right. There was this guy, yeah, folks, named Harry... son of a bitch, that whore. Named Harry J. Anslinger, and this son of a bitch this was, a, was a, a, like a federal employee who wanted a better job. And so, yeah. <laughs> so he he came up with this myth about marijuana, basically because it was a drug that was only really prominent in black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And he um, started. If you if you look at the newspapers, you only started hearing about marijuana. I think in about 1933 or 34, when he started planting mm -hmm. articles in newspapers across the country yeah. about the ravages of this drug. And, uh, of course, one of the outcomes of this was this film, Reefer Madness. Uh -huh. And, and he, got the, he got the drug illegalized. Well, he didn't get it illegalized. Marijuana's never been illegal. Did you know that? Up until 1937. Well, no, it wasn't illegal. In, I was it 1937. That they yeah, I think that's when they, they passed. Bastard Harry Anslinger. I don't call him Harry Anslinger. I yeah. call him that bastard Harry Anslinger. Yeah. Well, anyway, they had the law passed because it also, you know, it was mostly used by Mexicans and blacks. Hey, that's a way to put them in jail. Well, hey, no, wait good a idea. So. Wait a minute, but this was genius. It wasn't a law making marijuana illegal. There never was a law making marijuana illegal. What they did was they, it was called the Marijuana Stamp Tax Act. And what happened was if you wanted to have marijuana, you had to pay a, a stamp. Uh, you had to get a stamp uh, mm -hmm. and pay the tax on it. Okay. So let's say you had an ounce of marijuana. Do you know how much the tax was? I don't know. $30,000. Holy crap. <laughs> if you can't pay the tax, you're going away. So you better so, pay it up. So pay really, up when, it when they busted people for marijuana, it was a tax violation. That's how he got it passed. Wow. Oh, my God. What a slimy bastard fucking son of a bitch. And that's the good parts of him. And then he died, I think, in the 50s. And on his deathbed, somebody asked him if he really thought that pot was dangerous. And he went, no, I just needed a job. What a cunt. Actually, I think he died in the 75 when many people were doing 75, it. 75, okay. Illegal, but Se 75. It okay, was, but you know what he also did? Also in the 50s, he became the head of the United Nations Task Force on Marijuana. Oh, God. I mean, he kept <laughs> insisting. What a useless piece of shit he, he was. He never believed that it was dangerous. Uh -huh. He just knew it gave him a job. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, God, what a horrible whore. And, and so, uh, therefore, millions of li thousands of lives were ruined by being oh, destroyed. incarcerated. Yeah, you know. were locked up forever or 50 years or whatever. For having, oh, man, what a dick. You, oh, oh, he's so far. I hope he's so far down in hell he's looking up Hitler's asshole. <laughs> Do you remember the most famous guy ever arrested for marijuana possession? Back of course, in, back, back of course. The back then, yeah. uh, old Sleepy Eyes, Robert Mitchell. That's right. Robert Mitchum got busted for marijuana and went to jail for like I think it was three months or something like that. Yeah, that, yeah, something like that. Maybe thirty days or ninety days or sixty days, something like that. He went to the work farm. And to his death, I loved Robert Mitchum for that. Well, so Not, I, I was just like that smoking reefer in the forties. Oh, he, he, that's cool. If I went to Fifty Second Street and seen Bird plays horn and all that good stuff. Yeah. 
Yep, yep, yep. But, you know, I mean, who was it said, I think maybe it was Bill Hicks in his act that said, if you don't like marijuana, just remember all the great music you've heard <laughs> and that right. you've ever loved was created by people smoking marijuana. That's right. <laughs> He's right. Can't argue with the truth. So it was a, you know, it was a good drug. It, it is yeah. a good drug. I don't do it that much anymore. Do you still do it, right? Oh, I enjoy it immensely. Sure, certainly. I don't perform on it, and I, you know, uh, I don't, you know, but you know, once in a while, I have it for breakfast with my cornflakes, and it it makes the day agree with me. Yeah, my wife loves it. She, uh, you know, it. see, when I was a kid, my parents would come home from work and they would pour themselves a drink. Yep. Okay, that was their way of relaxing. All right. Yeah. They weren't alcoholics or anything like that. They just, they, it was a tradition. They come home from work, you want to unwind from work, you have a drink. All right? Yep. Yep. That's how they did it. Uh, World War II way. And now right. my wife does it for the same exact reason. She comes home from uh -huh. work, she's worked hard, she's tired, she wants to relax. Uh -huh. Boom, a little pot. I never do, I, I get contact highs, that's all. I don't oh, I, that's nice. I don't really smoke. Save money. I don't smoke it that much anymore. I'm just not crazy about it any longer. Uh huh. You know? Oh I I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It just uh, you know it just puts a little sugar on the day. So, you know Maybe I'm, I don't depend on it, but it's there and it's cheap and uh, what the hell and it's legal here. So maybe, there you go. Maybe I matured out of it. That could be. You know? it might have I heard Paul McCartney recently stopped and he he was like an everyday guy, so who knows? Um, uh, do you know who was an everyday guy who, who's, uh, to me, the most famous everyday guy for pot? And he never he never even made a big deal out of the fact that he didn't do it. Uh -huh. But he did it literally every single day of his adult ah. life. Louis Armstrong. Of course, yeah. I love it. It's the finest medicine that money can buy. Bubba, do that, do that, Why do you think I'm smiling all the time, motherfucker? <laughs> I'm always high, yes. Yeah, but I mean... Me and Jack T. Garden. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, who knows how many other people did it. I would imagine in his time, Bing Crosby did pot. Oh, sure, back in the, you know, some guys, you know, did it in prep. I think Frank Sinatra tried it in the 30s, didn't like it, and preferred his old... Jack Daniels or whatever he was if drinking. He, some it, guys prefer well, alcohol. you know something? Oh. If he hadn't done all that booze and kept smoking pot, he probably wouldn't have gotten the Alzheimer's and stuff, you know? Yeah, that's right. That he, would have, he wouldn't have had as many guys whacked either. <laughs> uh, I don't think he had anybody whacked, okay? Uh, he, wouldn't have, he would have kept Peter Lawford in the rat pack. Or the rat pack. Kennedy, Smedity, hey, it ain't your fault, baby. Come on, <laughs> hand me that bomb, Jack. <laughs> Frank wants to get mellow. Yeah, yeah. I read a book about. I read two books about Frank Sinatra. I all I have. You're not going to believe this, but all I ever listen to on my iPhone is Sinatra. Uh -huh. When oh, I'm walking Sinatra down the, the street, it's always Sinatra. Nothing but Sinatra. Occasionally, but Sinatra. occasionally some other stuff. You know, uh -huh. occasionally there's some Tony Bennett. There's some Tony Bennett with Lady Gaga, who I happen to think is the real deal. There you go. Uh, uh, but basically, it's Sinatra. And so I also yeah. read two whole books on Sinatra, and I don't do a lot of reading, okay? Uh -huh. uh, and uh, Jesus, what a miserable guy. Oh, I, mean, <laughs> I wasn't a happy guy. The only time he was happy, the only time he was just absolutely perfect as a human being when he was when he was in the studio, then he was happy. Uh, he loved being with an orchestra. He loved singing. He loved doing that. And, you know, it it was his was his life. But uh, other than that, the guy was a miserable human being. Uh, were, yeah, well, maybe if they had the right medication back then, he could have taken it. He should have smoked pot and first, by, right? By, said, by the yeah. way, I'm a miserable human being, too. But not like that. Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean... <laughs> Well, you know, you give it, you you get anything you want. You snap your fingers and they do it, and then something goes wrong. And he gets mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but he just he just uh, he he. It, it was some terrible stuff about his just his life. You know, uh, the, yep. the the saddest part <laughs> of the book is when he he decides. You know, he gets behind Kennedy. In fact, uh, he uh, he did a song. Uh, the Kennedy song, which I play here sometimes on the show, which is uh, 
K E double N E D Y. Jack's the nation's favorite guy. All of you mugs better back Jack. Oh, I'll give you a smack. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, wonderful he, Sammy Can and Sammy Can't wrote it together. A little joke that. Yeah. Uh, arrangement by uh, Fliver and Zweeback. Wonderful. I don't do none of that Elvis acid no, rock he, he, pop crap. Just good, clean orchestration. He paid for the session. He got it, Nelson Riddle's orchestra. They did High Hopes, uh-huh. but it was a song about Kennedy. And yeah. so he was the big Kennedy follower, and his mother was a big Democrat, you know, uh-huh. and a bo- and a bo- Pin Dolly. And, and a and abortionist. Uh, <laughs> At Pin Dolly. No, she did. At Pin Dolly for nothing. <laughs> she did abortions. Uh, she worked as a midwife and did abortions. Yeah, dead baby Dolly. Look out. Yeah, but anyway, so so he uh, he was a big Democrat, and uh-huh. uh, to show you how petty he was, what happened was. <laughs> Kennedy was supposed to come and stay at his place in Palm Springs. Yeah, that's right. And so Kennedy, in order to make it ready for the president, made a special uh, a building for him to stay in. Yeah, a place the whole, to ha- place the wing to, for him, the Jack Wing. A place to house the Secret Service, all of uh, that. <laughs> had it all God, built because he was, was coming sick. out to stay with him in Palm Springs. Right. Joseph Kennedy says, you got to stop hanging out with Sinatra. That's not good. He's mob, and uh, it just doesn't look good. Well, you know, Joseph P. Kennedy was mob, too. What a mess. What a mess he makes up. (laughs) So uh, uh, he cancels after Sinatra has built this whole compound for Kennedy. It threw him. I believe in. I'll be staying at that Bing Crosby's place because yeah. uh, he's not all mobbed up like Frank, and he can get he, the he, same pussy I could get over there. Well, he did do something like stay with with Crosby. He stayed with somebody yeah. else. Was it Crosby? Yeah, it was Bing Crosby, who was a Republican, but he said, stay with me. You can watch me beat up my boys with a baseball. A bad baseball, baby. Anyway, so uh, so so at that point. Sinatra was so incensed and so depressed and so uh, he was just supposedly inconsolable, all right, that he became a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> Pissed him off enough to change parties. Oh, what a child! Lifelong, what a- lifelong Democrat, fought for Democratic uh, causes, was uh, was a real left winger. As soon as this yeah, happened, that's he right, had, in the forties and fifties, so sure, he's like very left wing, left leaning. He just went fuck you. I'm no longer a. Uh, I'm no longer a. Uh, uh, a Democrat. And, and Nixon uh, called him up, said, "Welcome to the dark side, Francis." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, you know, but uh, Sinatra was. <laughs> I often wonder how can you be now. I, I'm depressed all the time, but I have no talent. <laughs> I have no talent, but uh, in the case of Sinatra... Then you can make it big in show business. <laughs> you can be a, a stand-up comedy star. Here's a guy who has maybe had the greatest, possessed the greatest virtuosity, the greatest talent uh-huh. of any single human being in that century. All right? Uh-huh. I mean, yep. uh, you listen to his stuff, and especially in his prime in the 50s and early 60s, it was just, it was like, it was, it was scary, you know, it yeah. was that good. Um, and, and so you, you go, oh, what the hell is this all about? You know, I don't understand it. Uh, why is he so miserable when he's got this <laughs> talent? And yet he mm-hmm. was miserable. And you know something, the other thing about him that really bothered me was that he had this incredible voice, Right. You know, they called yeah. they called him the voice. Uh, he had this incredible voice and this incredible virtuosity at singing, which is all dependent upon whether the vocal system works. And he smoked mm-hmm. and drank, and he didn't take care of it. And so, yeah. by the time we get to 1986, I have a recording of him uh, singing a concert in Madrid. He is so off key, and there is no <laughs> voice left. And you go, mm-hmm. why? Why is he doing this? You know, but mm-hmm. you listen to a guy like Tony Bennett; he's ninety-two years old, and while he doesn't have the same facility he had when he was, you know, when he was sixty, he still can belt out a song. 
Well, I never spend my time being pissed off at the world like Francis. Yeah. Tony Bennett's a male cat. Yeah. But, I mean, Sinatra lost it around when he retired, that thing about, you know, Blue Eyes is back. Well, when Blue Eyes came back, he wasn't the same Blue Eyes that left. He didn't have that same yeah. facility. And it started to go downhill from there. And he, yeah. was, he was married by then. He was married to Barbara Marks, who just oh, yeah. kept sending him out on the road, no matter how bad he was, no matter mm -hmm. what condition he was in, That that uh, <laughs> uh, because she wanted the money. Yeah. I want to add another wing to the house, Frank. Go back to the road. So he, some more. The number of concerts he did in a given year were incredible. And he, uh -huh. by the time I got to see him, which was <clears> in <throat> um, in uh, 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 the well, the eighties, I guess, just before mm -hmm. a little bit before his death, when Jilly died. Whenever the night Jilly died was the well, night I saw him. 92, May of 92. Really, May of 92. Yep. Okay, so good. Thank you very much for reminding me. It's the Circle Star Theater. And his opening act was a comedian. What was his name? Uh, Dries, uh, Tom, Tom Dreesen. Tom Dreesen. So I, I, had, Tom, Tom, yeah, I had Tom Dreesen on my radio show, and he said, hey, why don't you come down and see uh, the Sinatra show at the Circle Star. I'll get you, give you some tickets, and come Whoa. on, and I'll introduce you to Frank. And I went, oh, Whoa, boy. Big oh, deal. Wow, big deal. Well... He, when I got there, he said, Frank doesn't want to see anybody. Jilly just died. Oh, that's uh, for yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, he yeah. can't do his best yeah. pal, his leg breaker, his yeah. mug, his mook. Yeah, yeah. His well, well hey, it, it, these were the guys that were nice to him when he was having a bad time. Yeah, you know, sure. These were the guys that kept him alive. So why shouldn't he be friends with them? I would be. Yep. Anyway, Frank... Uh, 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 where, where, where was the point I was trying to make here? Where was I going with this? You were going to meet Frank Sinatra. Oh, I meet you Frank Sinatra. to see him with Tom yeah. Greeson and... Yeah. And yeah, so I, at least I got to see the show, and I was I would like in the fourth row at the Circle Star. And uh -huh. I'm looking up at Frank, right? And Frank keeps staring at me. And I wonder why every time he comes around to that side of the stage, because it was a circular stage, why he would keep staring at me. And then I suddenly realized just below his eye line is a teleprompter. Everything he was re singing was on a teleprompter. Uh, there was a time when Sinatra didn't need a teleprompter. He knew every nope, song he, knew, he was going to do. He knew the words. And if he didn't know the words, he didn't do the song. Yep. Uh, and uh, he uh, just uh, uh, keeps staring at the teleprompters. And I'm thinking, <laughs> how closely is he following those teleprompters? And I can read the ones on the other side of the stage, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes, she gets too hungry for dinner at eight. Jack. And I look at the, <laughs> I look at the monitor, and they've got the word Jack written there. <laughs> you got to know where to put the Jack, Frank. We'll remind you. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, his son was leading the orchestra. Frank Jr. Frank Jr., uh, he was conducting it from the, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, luggage compartment of a car, but he was, yeah. you know, uh, that's a joke. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Cause he, he got kidnapped. Actually, Frank, a kidnapped Jr. Joke now. Frank Jr. Wasn't a bad singer. Sounded a lot like dad. You oh know? yeah. He just, he didn't have the, the balls the father had, but yeah, he was, him, both yeah. the kids had really but, good voices. But anyway, he had made Frank him Jr. the orchestra leader. And now Frank is singing and he's doing one of his torch songs and he brings out a cigarette and he starts smoking it. Right. You know, and then when he's through, he throws it down on the ground and he uh, puts it out with his foot, or so he thinks. Mm -hmm. So he thinks, but he didn't know. Mm -hmm. He didn't put it out with his foot. <laughs> and about a half a song later, uh, uh, during the break from the next song, Frank Jr. is saying, "Dad, the rug's on fire." <laughs> And the rug was on fire. There was smoke billowing up from. Oh, the look rug. out! Frank smoking up the joint. This was what I got to see as Frank Sinatra. At the very right, right. end of his life, you know, an off I, night. What can you do? An off night. They were all off nights, from what I understand. <laughs> you know, they were terrible. And but the one chance I could have, maybe I could have seen him, was when my father was playing Cal Neva with Frank. My mm -hmm. father played the violin in the orchestra, and he was hired mm -hmm. to be in the orchestra. And oh, that's cool. and uh, and, and it, Frank was playing there with the Rat Pack. There was Dean, J you know, Sammy, and. And all of them, and I saw them walking through the, uh, you know, through the casino and going into a special little room on the side where 
they all kind of partied and Sammy always looked like he was kind of alone like he he wasn't the one that was really felt included uh, uh-huh. there. but what a you know uh, I I remember that my uh, is a very important moment in my life of seeing Frank yeah. Sinatra but I never saw him perform there and and uh-huh. to see him perform at that point there would have been oh a, yeah, sure. a, a, a memory that would have lasted me the rest of my life Sure. But there was nobody. See old Frank though. There was nobody better than Frank. Frank. And so you see what happens when I talk to Stephen Pearl. I waste twenty five minutes talking about Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Frank was all senile and he couldn't remember. That's why the trampy is a label. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run out of time, my friend. Already, my God! It seems like we've been talking for four seconds. My God, where does the time go? My well, God, my God! Where does the time go when you're having? Hey. Absolutely no fun at all. Ladies and regular, gentlemen. It's a regular physics party, I tell you. The lovely and attractive Stephen Pearl. Thanks, for uh, Stephen. Thank you very much, Alex. Always a pleasure to talk to you, and we'll do it again soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. How are you? Here I am. Uh, Lucky I could even hit the right switch to get us on. I screwed up so badly on the opening tonight that I I said to myself, you know, maybe it's time to just just cash it all in. You know, this is something I do by rote every single evening. And for some reason, I've just been thrown off completely. But it, it, I, I, it, to my credit, I guess I've changed some of the equipment in the studio, and uh, so I feel a little bit off. Okay, but uh, anyway, uh, I I screwed up on the whole opening, and I then I started it all over again, and I started and stopped the stream, and it it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. I I humbly apologize. Well. For those of you who want the all clear, there's no fill tonight. He also warned us there would be no fill on Friday, so therefore I won't feel horrible. But man, I just, you know, here are things that I do here every night over and over and over again, and I should be able to get them correct. And then all of a sudden, one night is just like everything blanks out. And then I try to stop the show and tried to start it again, and I push the wrong buttons. And I, I'm really embarrassed. I really am. Um, I'm getting the point where I'm getting the feel maybe I'm losing it, you know? Uh, And um, part of that could be that my life is just so dull right now. If I had something, if I could get up in the morning and go do something, maybe I had to work at a soup kitchen or something like that, something that gives me some kind of structure in my life. But now I, you know... Uh, when uh, when when they told me at uh, Sirius that they were letting me go, I said, "Well, this is this. I'm now, now I'm going to start dying uh, because it, it, you know when you don't have that structure, uh, you kind of lose, start losing it. And right now, stuff that I used to be able to do, God, like that, you know, and, and bam, 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 back and forth, I just I'm having a hard time." with and maybe it's just that i'm tired or i'm taking to the wrong medicines or whatever but uh it's it's bothering me anyways anybody gonna call because if you don't i'm going home wait a minute i am home jeez oh, huh. mm. so anyway that was Stephen pearl we were talking about sinatra a guy who you know unfortunately there are guys who who don't quit, who don't need to quit. A guy like Tony Bennett never needed to quit, really. You know, he was fine. Um, and um, he, to this day, he's 92. He's still, I mean, yes, he has diminished capabilities, okay? Uh, but he works around them. And he still has the chops, as we call it. You know, he may not have the equipment quite as good as it used to be. But he has the chops, and that was something Sinatra lost completely because I think he had no respect for it. Eh, who knows? Hey, the first guy up tonight is uh, Rob Alfano, ladies and gentlemen, and I couldn't be happier. Hello, Rob, and here comes Jeff Stein. Oh, here comes uh, Charlie Wallace. 
Let's see here. Um, and who else? Uh, Jeff is is uh, Jeff came online, so he should be trying to call in any second now. <laughs> Hello to both of you. How are you this evening? Good. Hey, I, uh, I, I saw good? Sinatra the same year you did. Really? 92, I think it was October of 92 did at you, Radio City Music Hall. Did you find it as sad as I did? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know you're looking at this iconic individual out there, and he had moments of, of I mean, he couldn't sing anymore the way he did, but it was still that Sinatra personality up there when he does the, the whole, um, you know, when he, when he sings it's quarter to three, there's no one in the place except you, and he lights the cigarette. And, yeah, that's when, you know, the, that's he, when the stage caught fire, by the way, that yeah. I told him the story. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the show because, I mean, what I have loved, I would have killed to see Sinatra during his oh, you know, hey, oh yeah. God. You know, but, but. I I, uh, I looked up at him on stage and occasionally he would turn a certain way and the light would hit him just right. And all of a sudden we went back 30 years. You know, it, it, you had that Sinatra feel. And then yeah. all of a sudden the light kind of changed and he was crone croaking along reading the fucking teleprompter and saying the word jack whenever it was on the teleprompter <laughs> you know. the one i saw him his opening act was um what's the red-headed uh singer uh sh um shirley uh sheila uh, mclean or mcclare so. sheila mccray Sheila McRae. Sheila McRae, I think. Yeah, really? Maybe that's right. Yeah, she was his opening act. Really? The opening act uh, I saw was Tom Dreesen, as I said, the comedian. Who's, it, she's the one that uh, said she was possessed or whatever. Oh, Shirley that, McLean. Shirley McLean. Yeah, yeah. Shirley McLean. She actually yeah. was performing that night. Yeah, I didn't she know she sang that night. Oh. Wow, that's a, that was a treat in and of itself. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, it was on my first honeymoon. We were in the Pocono Mountains, and I had gotten tickets to see Sinatra. And so we drove into the city and went to Radio City and, and got to see him. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then he didn't die much past that. I mean, that was October of 92. Yeah. So yeah. That, that was right near the end there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, he, uh, I guess he, uh, he died in, he died in 92, didn't he? 93. I can't remember. I think it was 92. Maybe it was 96. That could have been. Look Such it up. Look it up. Death. Look it up. Um, because what did... Wow, he died in 98. Oh, really? Okay. May 14th, All right. 98. All right. All right. Uh, so, but but uh, what time... What day did Bubbles say I saw him? I saw him in 19... He said 92. 92, but 92. like May, was it? Did he say? Yeah, yeah. So I saw... You know, he still had a few years left in him. Uh, but boy... It was it was sad because I want you know to this day I wish I had seen Sinatra in his heyday and I was so close to him because I was at Cal Neva and my father was in the next room with the orchestra you know but I couldn't go in because all the tickets were sold out you know and the band didn't get tickets yeah and I gotta tell you I guess I didn't care as much about Sinatra then as I do now. Now I look back at him and I listen to his stuff and I go, you know, this is just amazing shit, you know? Yeah. And people, if you're listening to me, folks, and you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a time where a singer was a virtuoso, you know? And, and in the case of Frank Sinatra, man, he did great. He did great stuff. I'm sorry. He was just, he was amazing. Just amazing. His last concert was in uh, Feb was February twenty fifth, nineteen ninety five. Wow. Okay. So you were you saw him in when ninety two as uh, well? October fourteen, fifteen, around then ninety two. Oh really? Oh okay. So uh, that was uh, yeah. All right. So we saw you saw him probably on the same. We could say tour, but I think he just was constantly working because Barbara made him. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. uh, you know, made him do it, uh, but it, it it really was a you know quite a quite a quite a deal. Uh, and he didn't day. know he was retiring. He, uh, he according to this article, it says there was no grand announcement, no farewell tour. He stepped on stage unknowingly. 
for the last time. It was an article that was written about the last concert that yeah, he did yeah, yeah, but in Vanity Fair. Who told him he was retiring, though? That's the prob- That's the question. You know. That's kind of um, bad. <laughs> I need to go back and read the rest of this article because it looks really good. I, I'm assuming that maybe is just a health thing is why he stopped. Yeah. Because he, he, he didn't, uh, and I, again, I, I have to read this article. It's a Vanity Fair article mm-hmm. as to maybe why it was his last concert tour. Yeah. Or last concert. But what do you mean he didn't know it was his last concert? He just, he, he just didn't. Yeah, he just, uh, they stopped. Again, it says here, uh, Frank stepped out on a stage in front of his adoring fans for what would have been, what would unknowingly be the last time. Oh, wow. On February 25th, 1995. Hmm. Son of a bitch. And then he died in 98. Yeah. 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 I can't remember what he well, died. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what he died of. I think he died... No, that was Benny. Benny died of pancreatic cancer, but I don't know what he died of. Does it say there? Yeah, I'm sure. I thought he had a heart attack or something. Let's see. I mean, he did have. I'm I'm not. I'm not positive. uh, That's Doug. Uh, They. they, It could have been. uh, It could have been a heart attack. I mean, he had. I think Alzheimer's. Is what he had. Cause. Yeah, because he was he was suffering from memory, obviously. Yeah, uh, the, uh, death, death, death. I mean, when well, you yeah, I was like probably. Oh. Sorry. What'd you say, Doug? I was gonna say like you know what you know you're talking about this. And I appreciate the you know the tragic subject you brought up there. Mm-hmm. I always remember like Jerry Lewis when he did. You know, I used to watch him when I was a kid doing the you know the the you know the muscular dystrophy things, and then like later on he started like. You know, dropping the F word constantly. And then finally, it was just sort of like, you're no longer part of this. You know, you know something that you started. Wait, what do you mean dropping the F word? I don't remember him dropping the F word. Oh, yeah. He, he said, like, isn't your son a fag or something like that? He, oh, he would no. do that off and well, on. That's not the F word. That's the other F yeah. word. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm, you know, well, uh, anyway. So. He died, yeah, he died but, of a heart but, attack. But that's the, that's the F word he was dropping. Leave it to Doug, to Doug to get trouble. us off of Frank Sinatra and on to Jerry yeah. Lewis. He, he died of a heart attack um, in the hospital. Yeah. He had been ill for a while, the last few years of his life, frequently hospitalized with heart and breathing problems, high blood pressure, pneumonia, and bladder cancer. But he was also further sure. diagnosed as having dementia. Yeah. So how how old was he? Did it says he that? was only eighty two. Oh Jesus, that was oh, a like, lot. That was a lot of fucking drinking. Yeah, he. You I know? mean, the smoking and the drinking. You know, the hard living. Yeah. Uh, hello, Josh Wheeler. How are you this evening? Doing good. How are you doing? Yeah. Are you you you're not that familiar with Frank Sinatra's life, are you? Well, I wouldn't say not that familiar. I mean, I, I like. Frank Sinatra, but uh, not not all that familiar. The uh, the baseball team I like, the Reds, used to have a guy that played for them. And actually, plays for the Mets now, but uh, he used to use uh, all Sinatra music for his walk-up song. He was yeah, from he did New as Jersey. a Yankee too. Yep. He did yeah, his- yeah, yeah. Todd <laughs> Frazier. Yeah, he used Todd to Frazier. use all his music for his uh, as yep. a walk up, so I used to go to the ballpark all the time. You'd hear it once every, you know, two, three innings or whatever. <laughs> a lot of people like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, uh, I just, I, I, uh, I, for some reason, in the last many years, got this almost incredible appreciation and fascination with Sinatra. And as I said on my iPhone, that's pretty much all I listen to. You know. Um, I have a lot of other stuff on there, and sometimes I'll listen to it as it goes by, but then I'll click it till I get to a Sinatra song, you know, it, because there's something about Sinatra that just, I mean, was so perfect, so perfect yeah. in his prime. It's just a shame to listen to, like, the Madrid concert in uh, in 86, in which he just, he, he's, uh, um, what was what's the song April in Paris he does and he sings it the beginning to it and it is such a clam it is so bad it is so off key and I go oh fuck I can't listen to this and I've kind of almost 
erased it from my iPhone. I don't want to hear that concert. It's that bad. It's like watching Rolling Stones now. And that was 12 years before the Rolling his final Stones concert. didn't even come close to the virtuosity of Frank Sinatra. I, know, I saw the Stones one time in concert back in, you know, in the 80s, and they completely suck. And I, I listen, we're all human. We have off nights and all that. But it was like the worst concert. I, it was like I could probably have sold my damn tickets for $200 a piece, and I didn't, and I wish I did. Okay. Well, so a, again, so Doug, and again Doug, Doug runs us off the road. Well, anyway, if you I'm keep doing that, Doug, if you keep doing that, Doug, if you, if you right. keep doing that and if you don't listen to other people talking and continue going along with the conversation, I'm going to have to say good night to you. Okay? Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Well, I may have to. I'll shut up. <laughs> Ta-da! Best thing you said. Uh, what's old is new again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it never changes, does it? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know what? You know, I gotta, I gotta figure out if I could uh, get you a, a. I gotta go upstairs and see if I could get you uh, a five-year anniversary thing because oh, it's February. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I got a note from Vernon Nunn, and he said, "Where's the new promo from uh, uh, Rob Alfano saying celebrating five years?" Yeah, it's and, five years and, now. Yeah, well, it's not yet exactly, is it? Oh, good. I don't no, feel no. bad when I. I don't it. think it's five years till April, is it? I was February. I thought. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. No. Hold, wait a minute. Why do I have it in my uh, head? Oh, that it was well, when did we start doing? I can't remember when we started doing the um, uh, the what do you call it the. Um, um, well, wait the minute. ramble. Wait a minute. I can I can probably go back. I thought it was 2014. I thought it was five years ago when you started. Right, doing that. but boy, we're talking about what month? And I well, I well you know, the thing I, is, the thing is, I'm trying to remember when we started doing this. Hold on a second. Let me look at the, my vault here and see what the oldest show is that I. Oh, have you have here. all the shows still. Yeah, let me see here. I may have all the shows to. Yeah, because that goes back to. Because you back. were doing, I'll tell you what, I remember the very first year, GabNet was really in its infancy. You went on the air, and you actually broadcast the State of the Union address. Really? Well, wait yeah. a minute. Hold on a second. The earliest one that I have here under AB, it, uh, but I may be able to go back further, is uh, 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 314. Nope. So if I go down here, I know there are some that aren't that are like um, uh, R A B. Um, hold on a second. That's no, that's seven four uh, R A B, fourteen oh eight. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, I see. That's uh, that. Uh, that's that. Okay, why is that there? I don't care about that. All right, G A P, Great American Podcast. So that goes back to seven one thirteen. So that's when we were still doing the TV show, right? So mm -hmm. I would say that if we had to put a date on it, I would go back to the first one I have here, uh, which is uh, three three fourteen, and it goes three, three fourteen. So wait a minute, so and it goes something like this. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to. Ah, there's a blast from the past. Uh, yeah. 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 Hold on. Really? <laughs> hey, everybody. How are you? Wait a minute. I got to stop something first. I, yeah, you're getting. I'm getting something here. Hold on a second. Just in 3 14. Wait a minute. So, what am I doing here? Uh, I don't know. First, I knew that. Now, why is that? Already extremely tired. For some reason, I'm not. Yeah, I got it by normal time. Hold on a second. New site. There we go. No, that's not it either. There's some reason, something I'm getting audio from, and I don't. I don't. You see? I'm I'm losing it. So I'm, so what I heard you say there with that show was that was your first nighttime show, three three fourteen. So you were doing the daytime show with Albert in February. 
Yeah. Well, we were doing, oh, I see. Okay, is that what you're saying? Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, Hold you were second. doing the date. I, I, I'm, I'm 99% sure it was February because, again, I remember tuning in. Wait a I remember you. I remember you tuning. I remember tuning in those first nights. You were doing the days, and but you were also coming on at various times. And you were doing the night. You came on and you did a show impromptu after the. Uh, and I called in on that show after the um, uh, the the uh, State of the Union address, which is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I I remember that. Wait a minute. I, remember you, I, I can't remember. figure out where the other sound is coming from here. This is what's driving me nuts. I Wait a minute, hold on a second. Is that it? No, they're all down. I have no idea where one the of sound those, is coming one from. One of those things when you rewire the studio. No, it's it's just it's one of these. If I kill all my if I kill my uh, complete uh, uh, all my stuff here, I'd probably be okay. But it does, I have no idea. See, wait a minute, hold on a second. See, there, there's me talking, trying to figure it out. I don't know where that sound is coming from. That's really strange. That's not, it's not there, and it's not there, and uh, it's, it's uh, not, uh, not uh, there, and it's not there. I have no idea where it's coming from. That's very strange. Well, wait a minute. Let me kill my uh, let me kill my uh, Chrome, and we'll see what happens here. Uh, okay, now do I get the sound? No, see, so it was somewhere in the browser. In, somewhere in the browser, and uh, let's just see if it comes back up again now that I start the browser again. I don't know where that was, but I wanted you to hear that uh, that first show, and uh, that I have here, uh, and. Um, it's a. Uh, let me see here. We go into it a little bit. Say, uh, we're not planning. On I remember on that. Well, oh, shut up, on, on, uh, uh, Doug. This out. There, there are a lot of issues here, and 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 quite frankly, can I just say I think we got. Uh, I think I can say this without fear of it coming back to bite me in the ass. I, I think we were screwed. All right, uh, but let this be a lesson to the rest of you. Don't sublet. Uh, I didn't sublet. I rented. I thought. Okay, that was still going on back then. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Five wow. years. I don't know that it wasn't earlier than 314. Uh, I, I'm, I'm beginning to believe that it was, uh, uh, you know, I started, uh, there's a, those are all the ABs, which are the, the latest files. Um, Do you have your daytime show? And uh, Albert's daytime show before the before the public house didn't he have a was it called public house during the day or was it did it change the public house at night? Well, wait a minute here here's the well here's the Great American Broadcast. Yeah. Now I don't know if this is the TV thing or not, but wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen of the United States of America. Uh, that's, 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 Ladies and gentlemen that's, of the that's, United that's, States of America. Oh. Let me see here. Wow. And that's the easy place to find us. Well, well, a couple of, we just did it as a convenience to kind of keep, because Albert kept nagging me about, oh, we got to have audio going out because we do radio. We don't do TV. Okay, so that, that was the TV show. And uh, then I said, here's a Skype address. Give me a call. I'll accept you and we'll talk. We'll, we'll do. That was that. That was uh, that was the TV show. So I don't know. I I, I guess. Uh, um, what, what, how, uh, what what can we say? How can we? Uh... Well, I, I seem to remember though when you were doing the TV show. I thought a couple times before you started the regular nighttime deal, mm -hmm. you used to come in and do some shows on like maybe like Friday nights and Saturday That's right. nights. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just, we do just these like, pop-up broadcasts. Yeah, yeah. just like special one-offs on like Friday night. And then maybe if it went really good and, you know, you were feeling pretty good, you'd say, hey, let's do this tomorrow. And we even did a few on Saturday nights, which were, you know, pretty yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, they so were. I can remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you also did some afternoon shows, too, because I remember calling in when I was traveling. 10 a.m.? No, well, 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 no, what we did was we did the show at 10 a.m. 
Yeah. And then we uh, then because that's when it went on when we did the TV thing with the TV. Then when that ended, that ended somewhere in January, maybe early February, where I was doing it every three weeks. I, I just it, we couldn't do it without Albert. Okay, let's be honest. And so yeah, then, Marjorie was helping you. But at some point, and I don't know, it may may have been before we ended the TV thing, I started doing a daily show at 10 o'clock. And then uh, Albert, I think, did 11 o'clock in the morning. And then That's all right. of a sudden, Albert went, Yeah, oh, he did like some afternoon. Will you uh, shut up, that? Doug, and let me just talk? <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> I th just fucking shut up, Doug. Jeez almighty. I, I'm going to get rid of him. Hell with it. I don't want. I don't want you, Doug. I'm sorry. You 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 flunked. The, you flunked again. Anyway, um, because all he is, he gets drunk and then he blab. You know, it's like a drunk pulling on the steering wheel of your car while you're trying to drive. Uh, and I'm. I just. Uh, you know, I'm not putting up with that. I removed from this group. Okay. Anyway, where were we? Okay. So here's how, here's how I remember it. So at some point, then he did eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he decided he didn't want to do it in the morning. So he was going to do it at 8 o'clock at night uh, or maybe 9 o'clock. I can't remember. And so uh, I decided, well, we can't, I can't just be here and he's there, you know, like it's a mouthful of teeth missing a whole bunch of teeth in the middle. So uh, I then went to the evening as well uh, and went on after him. Uh, and that's how the whole evening thing started. Now, I don't know when all of that happened. Somewhere in it, we didn't start calling it GabNet. We called it the Great American Broadcast oh, Network. Yeah. And then it is Albert who said, hey, GabNet. You know, and that's how it became GabNet. But now my question, uh, uh, just make the promo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. I'll start. Just See voice it, started. and I'll start running it. You know, um, <laughs> because. Uh, but that's that's how we that's how we started. Uh, uh, let me see here. Nobody nobody's writing me, telling me when it started. So I don't know. Was I too harsh on Doug, or did you hear that it was he was getting a little difficult to control? Well, you, your your fuse with Doug is short. It's very short. It's very short. Because he has no sense of, what am I looking for? No sense of being part of the group. Flow? Flow, yeah. And it makes it difficult for me. And God knows I'm not feeling that great about things right now. Because tonight I really fucked up the opening to the show. And it just made me feel bad. But it's all the new equipment I put in and the new way things are and so on. I just uh, got my new board. And I'm playing with it in the other room, and I don't want to put it in till this weekend. I want. I, I'm. I think I could probably put it in in five minutes, and it would all work, okay. But I don't want to take the chance. But the sound coming out of it is beautiful. My voice sounds much better. Uh, it's more controllable. Uh, it's got effects which I don't need. I don't think you want to hear my voice and echo through a whole show, uh, you know. But. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it's really good. So it's a Mackie, and uh, it seems to look like it's going to do exactly what I need it to do. I never had a board that actually puts itself into the machine through a USB port. Yeah, that's what mine does. And what it does is that uh, because it's a Mac, it doesn't give you a volume control f for the input. The input's just the input. Am I right? Could, yeah, because it's ones and zeros. You don't have right. to adjust and it. so you adjust it in whatever you're doing it with, like your... You know, the volume on your, uh, 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 what do you call it, your, uh, uh, the volume on your various things that you, that you use it with, like your audio and so on. But it looks, it looks pretty good, sounds good, records well. Uh, and I think I just figured out where all the outputs on that one are going to go. And this board is getting old. It's starting to get really creaky, this mixer that I've got here. So I'm, I'm happy. Um, so anyway, but I just feel, anybody get the feeling I'm losing it? I mean, you, you tax yourself. You, you constantly innovate and change and update. And because of that, you're doing a lot. You're putting out 
television and you're putting out audio and you're doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just, it's, I mean, I don't know how you do it. I, I wouldn't, I, I would take me forever to learn all that and then keep track of it. So no, but I, I think yeah. you, you're, you're hard on yourself. Well, but the things that I do every day, like that opening, okay, where I know I go to this and then I go to that and I go to this and I go to that and I fuck the whole thing up tonight, just completely. And I'm tired. I'm a little loopy. I took a, a, a Xanax last night, which I think maybe threw me off today, you know. And, and I, uh, you know, it just bothers me when that happens because I'm, I'm a perfectionist. You know, when it comes to doing a show, I like doing a show. And I, 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 you know, and, uh, uh, you know, right now I'm using a, a, a weird kind of, I'm using a, a USB port into the thing with an audio jack in it that, that get, puts, gets the volume into the new machine without the, the new board. It comes right out of the board. This is an all analog board and it doesn't come out the other way. And, um, I, uh, uh, I'm, it, you know, it, 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 it kind of is difficult because I can't over-modulate. It, it's very strange. Anyway, I don't, I don't get it. It's all new to me. And I, maybe I'm too old for new stuff now. You know, maybe, maybe I'm just an analog guy at heart. <laughs> you know. I, 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 it's easier to deal with the analog. I agree. Well, because you know it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the... It, I have to admit that the digital sounds clearer. You know, the new board sounds clearer. Yes, Jeff. Oh, turn on your, uh, turn on, yeah. See, he's an old guy, too. I have to remind him to turn on his audio. Yeah, that's what you said. I don't know, just because other things. But uh, I, th I think, it, you know, a lot of the stuff that you used to do is, is quite intuitive for you because you've done it that way yeah. for years and years and years and and even if you talk about for the last five years mm -hmm. a lot of it is continuous yeah but in the last i don't know in the last six months you've been kind of changing things and i'll call it uh electronically mm -hmm. and whether it's software hardware the combination whatever and i think a lot of that stuff is not as intuitive as is as the other stuff was, and uh, and and it's complex. And I don't think you have a protocol written down that you're following. Well, you know what my wife says? She says, well, write down everything you're going to do. And I go, well, that's fine for you at the office. But when I'm, you know what I'm talking about, Rob, when you're doing this kind of thing, you can't write down and then be sure that you turn on pot two. It's a feeling. You know, you've got to right. just know the process. You know? Doing? Yeah, you don't have time to read through the instructions. You, it's a feeling. You just it, you flow. It, the the, yeah. the control room becomes an extension of your hands, and you just it's like playing an instrument. Okay, but tell me if maybe this is just me getting old, but I don't get the new Skype. I just don't get it. It's not intuitive enough. Again, because we're used to it, they they changed the paradigm. They changed it completely, and I you have to hunt and peck because it it doesn't follow the old convention. They did that when they Microsoft did that with Microsoft Office when they got to what was it two thousand the war, version after two thousand three when they went with that round button thing and they got rid of the ribbon on top mm -hmm. and worked for years with the ribbon file. You know where to go for yeah, things, yeah, and, yeah, and then yeah. they went and they they changed everything, and it's not intuitive. Uh, but it should be, you know, the day that we had trouble here, and I had to go use the new one. I couldn't get it to make a citizen panel. There was no way, you know, and I couldn't figure out how to do it without hanging up on you and then calling you back or something like that. And I'm going. Is there something wrong with me? Is there some reason I can't figure out how to do this? When was the last time you got in a new vehicle? Um, and I mean a brand new vehicle. I have a 2019 car in my driveway. Yeah, It's very different from even a 2014 car, a 2015 car. I haven't, dri cars, I haven't, I haven't driven a car in about four, three, four years. 
So you you know how when you get in a car, you know every time you get a rental, mm-hmm. I always call it you have to bond with the car, right? You get in the car and you gotta you know before it becomes second nature like your car, you need to bond with it. Yeah. You know, and it's the same kind of thing. A car needs to be an extension of you. And you need to know where everything is, and because you're doing 60 miles an hour, you yeah. don't want to be searching for shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's the same thing. But I, but I don't know that. I mean, am I wrong, or is Skype just not too terribly intuitive? I mean, the old one was. It's, again, it depends on if you're new to Skype and you don't know the old Skype, then that might that Skype might be intuitive yeah. to you. But will somebody write me an email? Alex at gabnet.net and tell me how I make a citizens panel on uh, the new Skype. I can't figure it out. I mean, without it, here, I'll show you how simple it is, folks. If you call me, let's say you're Rob Alfano and you call me, comes up, Rob Alfano is calling, it says add to group. You click on add to group and he's part of the group. It's that simple. I cannot find anything in the new Skype that makes it that simple. Even Damien who is a little clearer headed than I am and younger than I am, still hasn't figured out how to make a citizen panel other than calling people back. Well, maybe it's not possible. It may not be possible. In which case, why the new Skype? Why not let us have the old Skype if we want it? Why can't we run both of them? You know, I can take I can take uh, I can take a Windows Office program from 2008 and it will still run on my Windows machine until it doesn't. Once they stop supporting it, you're lucky if it runs, right? It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Little wacky things start happening cuz they don't patch it with Windows patches, uh, you know, it's a financial decision that they make. Well, I, no, no, it, it's not a financial decision. It's a Nazi. Yeah, it it's, 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 it, it's a Nazi-like decision. It's like telling you you've got to go with this new thing or else. Well, look, you could say it. You could look at it that way. But the bottom line is, you have to have developers. Mm-hmm. You have to have staff. You've got to have testers. So if you're going to upgrade your version of the OS, whether it's the Mac OS, whether it's the Windows OS, and you've got a version of Skype, and you've whomever made the decision to redesign it. Mm-hmm. For whatever their reasons are, now they need double the staff to go back every time they make a change. Because especially with Windows, they come out with patches. Patch Tuesday, you know, every Tuesday there are new patches. Yeah. So they've got to go back in and they've got to recertify it and they've got to recheck it. Every company does it. I have customers who have some of our old hardware. I got I got a call from a customer recently. He's been running this old sand that we have that just still works. It works for years. It's great. Yeah. Well, he upgraded a version of VMware, which yeah. is the virtualization platform that he's using. Yeah. And little did he realize it up it upgraded, but every time he reboots a host, it loses the storage. He called VMware and VMware said, "Well, that's because we no longer support that hardware. We have to make a decision where it's not financially financially feasible for us to keep having to recertify every piece of hardware down the line. It's the, that's well, why. Well, they, then they fuck they do you. It. Why are you in business? You know, you're in business. They're in business to, to innovate. They're in business to innovate. Well, you know, I mean, I, I like for instance, I. I, if you have a Mac and it's older than eight years, you can pretty well rely on the fact that Apple is no longer going to let you op- use the new operating system. Uh, my Apple Watch is there now. I can't update the Apple Watch anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I have the two Apple Watch two. Yeah. I can't. I couldn't put well, my what, old my OS five on yeah. it now. I couldn't do it. My old Mac Pro, I couldn't put Mojave on. Now this new oh. machine, I can put the new new Mojave on. How old is that old one? Uh, but, 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 uh, 2011. So eight years, okay. Yeah. So I've got a, I've got another three or four years on on this before they won't let me upgrade it anymore. Yeah. Do they let you go to Mojave? Okay. Yeah, I got yeah. this in 2015. Yeah, yeah, the 2015s will work. This is a 2013 uh, uh, Mac Pro that I bought just recently. That doesn't mean it was made in 2013. If you bought a new Mac Pro today, it would be the 2013 model. Okay, but um, uh, it, you know, I, I hate. But, uh, folks, are you are we boring you with this tech talk? Okay, well, yeah, well, to hell with it. I'm you know. You hear what's going on in my home state of Virginia? You know something? I'm listening to that. Uh, it, it and it it it's almost 
a twilight <laughs> zone. It's almost a twilight zone episode. First, you got the governor, who was found when uh, what twenty five years ago when he was nineteen eighty four when he was leaving was. dental school or something or medical school. He in his yearbook he took a picture of himself in blackface. Okay, so now they want him to resign. Standing resolve. next to a KKK person, and yeah. they don't know if first he said he apologized. Yeah. Then he said, I don't remember it. Neither one of the people is, is me. me. But he did say that he did wear blackface on some other occasion. Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. He, he, uh, he learned uh, to do the moonwalk. All right. So, okay. So how many years ago? 20, 25 years ago. The 30. Guy, they're asking 30, the guy to resign. First of all, let's ask Charles Wallace, who is our official Negro on the panel. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Charles, Charles, if a guy wore blackface 25 years ago and, and now he's, while he's been in office, he's done a lot of civil rights legislation. Yeah. How are you going to feel about him? I, I, I'd say, what's he like now is my, would be my question. That's I don't care what he's like 30 years ago. That's exactly the point. <clears throat> so he's being asked to leave as governor. Okay. He's well, only the Democrats do that. Yeah. yeah. So next, well, the Democrats love to eat their own. Witness K uh, Kirsten Gillibrand and uh, and what's his Al name? Franken. Al Franken. Al Franken. Uh, uh, so now we go to step two. Well, if he gets thrown out as uh, governor, the lieutenant governor takes over, and now a woman has accused the lieutenant governor of what rape? Something like that? A yeah, sexual uh, assault. A sexual Quite. assault or a, a unwanted uh, advances or something like that. He forced her to give, he forced a blowjob on her. Oh, he pushed I, her head did down. He, it, was, it was a forced blowjob? Okay. Yeah, uh, a forced blowjob. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then, now, okay, so that means that he can't be the governor if they don't want, if they want to, like, impeach him. So it would then go to, in succession, the attorney general, right? Yes. And now they found a picture uh, yes. of the attorney general in blackface. Yeah. Come he on. He admitted to it. Yeah, and he admitted to <laughs> it. Uh, I mean, th what a comedy of fucking errors this has turned into. And the next person in line yeah. is the speaker, who is a Republican. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, there isn't a shot in hell that any, all three of them are going to survive this. They're just not going to leave. And the process of getting them out is very difficult here in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And so they're just, you know, I was watching CNN tonight and they were talking about where well, they had Wes, uh, I can't think of his last name on. Um, and he's friendly with, he's a black guy and he's friendly with, with uh, all three of those guys. And he knows them. He's from Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is an opportunity for us to get what we want. In other words, you're going to make them. You've apologized. Okay, apologies. Like I tell people when I call them all the time, apologies are empty most of the time. Oh, we're so sorry for your problem. That's bullshit. You don't give a rat's ass, but you just say it, right? Yeah. Well, now make them put in legislation that can benefit them. Right. Let them really atone by getting some of the some of the legislation through the, the Virginia House and change some of the some of the rules that are right now stacked against them, like uh, some of the some of the the uh, the, the crime uh, um, bills and some of that. So that's what he's hoping for, because they're need, none of them are going to leave, but get them to atone. Wow. So, so, that's so what's going on in Virginia. Yeah, so so at this rate, you're going to be the new governor? Good thing. <laughs> it might get there. Yeah, no blackface, right, in your past? Okay. I, you know, in 1979, I'm going to admit to this on GabNet, in 1979, I went to a Halloween costume party. Yeah. It Remember, it was the Iranian crisis. Mm-hmm. And everybody used to tell me, hey, you, you, I look like an Iranian. I had a dark beard. Yeah. And... Lots of thick, dark hair. Yeah. And so my, my roommate used to say, you're an Iranian, you're an Iranian. So I went as an Iranian and I put on dark, like olive colored makeup and I wore a turban mm -hmm. and a suit. I went like an Arabian, uh, 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 an Iranian uh, diplomat. 
Oh, okay. That, that mm. was my Halloween costume that year. Well, I so to... I've been in. I didn't do blackface. I did what? Yeah. Brown face. I don't know. You so know, I can't be the governor either. Uh, uh, blackface. You know, here's the thing. I think that 25 years ago, if somebody decided to dress up as Michael Jackson and they were white, nobody would think twice of it. They would go, oh, yeah, that's funny. It, uh, that's funny. It's, they don't think of it as blackface or anything else. Hey, I'm going as Michael Jackson. I got one glove on. I got a sparkly yeah. jacket. And I'm wearing, I, I put some shinola on my face. Uh, granted, you know, blackface has never been t tasteful, but uh, it it became terribly uh, tasteless all of, all of a sudden. And uh, the question is, uh, uh, it, 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 shouldn't it be a, uh, shouldn't we say, hey, you know, okay, you did that then, that was then, this is now, as long as you didn't do it last year. You know, as long as you didn't do it in the last 10 years. Um, maybe I'm being too forgiving about this and too white about this, but I, I just think that there's a certain time at which it was okay to do it. You know, I mean, it wasn't okay. I mean, from a, from a social standpoint, I would not think it was a good thing to do, and I would never have done it. But there was a time where it was permitted. Let me put it that way. Didn't uh, Sam Malone from Cheers? What's his name? Yes, uh, 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 Ted Danson. Ted Danson and his at the time uh, wife, or uh, uh, he went. He Whoopi went Goldberg he, was his girlfriend at the time, right? And he went in blackface to some event he, with with Whoopi. With Whoopi, he went in blackface. Yes, remember yes. that? Yes. Nobody's ever brought that up again, have they? No. Yeah. yeah. You know, I didn't even think. You know, when and I'm, I'll be I'm, honest with you, I'm not. Ra I don't. You know, I, I guess somewhere inside of me there must be some. I'm not a racial person. I, I dated black women. I, I don't have a. You know, I, I, anyhow, I'm sure somewhere deep in me there's something. But I never thought of it as being like even when I dressed up as the Iranian. I didn't. I did it to be funny. I didn't do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I didn't even think about that until I started thinking. I said, "Wow, if, well, I wonder if that would be considered racial if I did that." You wouldn't do that today, but back then, I, everybody, we had a good time. It was a party. We had a blast. I walked around shaking hands like a diplomat, you know. Um, we had a good time. I mean, it wasn't done for racial reasons. And I'm sure the governor, when he was Michael Jackson, didn't do it for racial reasons. Uh, 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 right. So, I mean, uh, here, here, I've got a, and well, I, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to find a picture of you know, Danson's just... racist humor, Paul's crowd. No. Uh, let me see here the images. There we just go. wouldn't do it today, though, because we're in a different world. Here we go. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can, uh, if I can get this over to the uh, next machine here. Um, let me see here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Ted Danson. Uh, did it come up here? I can't find it here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Ted Danson. Um, uh, T. Uh, yeah, Ted Danson. Uh, let me see here if I can if I can somehow I've, I've got to figure out a news image. OK, I'll go there. I'll go plus. I'll go image. I'll go image. OK, OK. Then let me browse here and I go to the desktop and uh, dancing. Here we go. OK, OK. Open. I, this takes me a long time when I'm trying to, you know, do it. But and if you if you if you can watch us online because you guys aren't going to be able to see this, ladies and gentlemen, this was Ted. I don't know what year was this. Oh God, I don't know the year. Hmm. Let me see. 20, oh, 2011. No, it's the not twenty eleven. Well, here's the picture, folks. But um. There's Ted Danson in blackface, and he. It's, oh, it, it, 1993. In 1993, this is Ted yeah. Danson in blackface, doing the minstrel style blackface, in which you do the white around it. Right. Um, are you offended by that, Charles? 
Yeah, I'm kind of offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody loves Ted Danson. Nobody's going to say Ted Danson can't work anymore because he did this in 1993. Oh, our, we've uh, socially we've 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 evolved, and so you wouldn't do it today. And but that's it. So should the governor be yeah. ostracized because of what he did? Even earlier than that, yeah. ten years earlier than that, almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me come back out of that. Okay, but anyway, and then, it was yeah. If you look at his page and that photo, yeah. it doesn't look like him in blackface because the smiles are very different. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't you're, look like oh, it's him. Oh, you're talking about the governor. Yes, you're talking about the governor. So I don't even think he did that blackface. It, that wasn't him in that picture. Yeah. But I mean, uh, all, all I'm asking is, is it, you know, what's the cutoff date on bad taste? You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, if if uh, if you did it today, okay, you've you've got a problem. But if you did it ten years ago, you have to. Those were the mores of the time, and if right. nobody said, you know, you should know better. I never ever. I don't think I ever tried blackface ever. Okay, and I'm in show business. At some point, I should have run into doing blackface, and I never did. How about you, Josh? What do you think about all this? You've been quiet. Well, I just sometimes just wonder, like, where it... You'll have to have some ultra-liberal call and explain it to me, because I, apparently I don't get it. Like, where it has to stop, either, because I guess I've never really understood what would have been wrong with painting yourself that way. I mean, I agree that I wouldn't do it, because I don't care, but... If you really wanted to dress up like something and, and you're white and the person that you want to imitate is black, why is it offensive to do it if you like the person and you're just trying to imitate him? You know, like, for example, one time, maybe it didn't make national news. Maybe it was around here. I don't know. But so maybe it was like a year ago or two years ago when that Black Panther movie was really big. Yeah. There was a white kid around. Uh, I think this might have been where I live. Who's like six or seven. And he really liked the Black Panther character. I don't watch this movie, so I don't know. But, you know, he's just really into it. He wanted to go as that for Halloween. Yeah. And his mom and dad, you know, they paint the black face on him, and everybody freaked out. And it's like the black people, if they're the ones complaining about it, first of all, they probably aren't, like Charlie said. It's probably white ultra-liberals liberals who are the ones complaining about this crap. But if black people are complaining about it, it's like, well, you're missing the point that it's a young white kid who looks up to an older black person. Just let it be, you know, by starting all this conversation over it. Yeah. There was no race issue. You are the ones who made it the race issue. He liked the older black person. He looked up to him. And then suddenly you brought this conversation into it. And I'm sure the kid's like seven. And he's like, he didn't, he looked at a black person and thought, I like to be like him. And then you started this conversation and, now you got to have a race relations conversation with a seven-year-old. It's like, couldn't you just let it go? Uh, you know, the thing is, to begin with, um, we we don't we don't take apologies very well anymore. You know, in the old days, if you well, at least he apologized, okay, he said he was sorry and he recanted, and you went, okay, good, good for you for apologizing. What good does apologizing do you anymore? Why should anybody apologize? You know, right? And, and, and I'm and, and it, 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 you know what, you know what we've lost here. What was the intent when that guy put on his black face, let's say, or when Ted Danson did it? What was the intent? Did he hate black people and he wanted to make fun of them? Well, that would be wrong. But right. did he like black people and he wanted to honor Michael Jackson or or the like the little kid he wanted to uh, pretend like he was the king of Rwanda? Uh, What's wrong with that? You know, right. there's that, not a you, hatred just, there. It, it, and just like you said, when you remove the intention from the equation and simply make it about being black yeah. or being well, yeah. white, then you just make race relations worse. I mean, if, if a black person paints himself with white shoe polish, am I supposed to flip out? How am I, mean, I supposed to I feel? I don't fucking care. The, <laughs> the Wayans brothers a few years ago yeah, made a movie, movie where they played white girls. <laughs> 
I think we have to be careful in a way because we're white guys and we're saying we don't care and it's not such a big deal. I think that's part of it. The other part of it is in Virginia here. This is while we're like almost not the South, we're still the South and there's still a lot of prejudice in the South. And so when Southern men dress up in blackface, it might have a little different meaning, especially when there are people here like what just happened in Charlottesville, right? So close by. Richmond and Charlottesville are maybe 45 minutes away from each other. Um, So I think there's that. But you see, what happened in Charlottesville can clearly be uh, put at the feet of somebody hating somebody. Absolutely. Okay. You can't put this blackface that the governor did at the feet of Mm -hmm. racism. It's not, it wasn't a racist move on his part. It was maybe a stupid move on his part. And a, and a non-thinking and non-caring p- thinking on his part. But it was certainly, I, 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 he, in fact, this, this governor, I may be wrong about this, is known for having passed lots of civil yeah. rights legis- legislation. Absolutely. But you got to remember the picture that, sh- that surfaced is a, man in, a white man in blackface standing next to a guy in a KKK outfit. Yeah. And that's the part. That's yeah. the thing. But, it's not the Michael Jackson thing. Yeah. It's the KKK it, thing. But, but sometimes the problem, too, I think, is it was so long ago because, you know, if I – and I'm going to be brutally honest about it here for a second because, especially since this was like in college, sometimes I think it depends how people grew up because I'm going to be I'm going to be honest. I grew up, and I'm from what people would consider, you know, the north. I mean, I live in, you know, central Ohio. Mm-hmm. And I'm just telling you, I grew up in a household or at friends' households – Mm-hmm. Where it was not uncommon. I mean, I'm not saying it was every day or whatever, but I'm just saying it was not uncommon. No one would bat an eye if my father or the other parents, yeah. kid's father, whose house you're at, or even their mother, used the word nigger. And this was in the 90s, okay? No, we don't go to Columbus. We're not moving to Columbus. I'm not living with those niggers, okay? I'm Just bear with me. Yeah. And so you're 12, you're 13, you're 15, you're 16. And you find yourself thinking that or feeling that because you've never known anything else. Okay. And then all of a sudden you're 20, you're 22 and you don't live at home anymore and you meet other people. And then you're like, I don't really think I believe that. I don't really think I ever believed it. But now you're like, you know what? I don't really think I believe that. And then time goes on and time goes on and you know, you don't believe it, but you look back and you think, wow, if I ever ran for president, I can almost guarantee you someone would be able to say they heard me use that word at some point in my life. And I would and in today's world, I would never be able to explain that away. But I can tell you for sure, a hundred percent, that I can sit here on this panel and I would never think of Charles Wallace as a black man, as a white man. And he's just Charles Wallace. He's Charlie. That's the God's but, honest but truth. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I was a kid, my father said, do, do you know you know what the definition of a kike is? And I said, no, what's the definition of a kike? And he said, a Jewish gentleman who just left the room. Uh, you know, and the same is true of that word, too. And, and the point is, and um, uh, uh, Lenny Bruce had a bit that he did. And he got up on stage, and I'm going to use the word, and he went uh, to the audience. Um, nigger, 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 nigger. And he said, now does it sound as bad as it did? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's just a word, you know, and it's the way in which it's applied. We empower the word. We empower the word. Yes. Yeah. And and the reason why black people, and correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, although, you know, we're not having you on here as a representative of the black race. Um, uh, the reason why blacks use it a lot, they go, well, they call each other that. Well, it's to disempower the word, you know, that they disempower it. Am I right, Charlie? Is that? Uh, well, I, that's I what say? I'm told. <laughs> so you don't use the word. That was the latest memo you got? Yeah, I mean, I never. I, I remember one time when I was about eight years old, and I used that word for one of the neighborhood kids, and my dad heard me. 
He beat the tar out of me. I mean, this was no spanking. He had a big belt and whipped wow. me good. And I've never used the word since. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, uh, when I was a kid, <clears throat> and I first heard that word, my father said to me, that is a bad word, and you never say it because it hurts other people. That's what he told me. He said, you never use that word. So anytime I ever heard that word, uh, 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 hairs went up and down my neck. I mean, I just, you know, I had a revulsion to that word because my father from the, almost the day I was born, inculcated me with the fact that that was not a word you used. Right. Okay. So now I'm living in Houston, Texas, which gives a whole new meaning to the word racism. Uh, and, um, uh, I'm working the show, and I've told the story before, and my program director comes up, and he comes in, walks into the control room, and there's a record playing, and he looks at me and he goes, hey, you should go downstairs. There's the nicest little old nigger lady downstairs. <laughs> and I never heard nice and whatever in that combination before i had always heard it as a hateful spiteful term you use to describe a black person because you hated them okay and here he was saying it in a very benevolent way he was just described and then one time somebody called my show and used the term and i said please don't use that term and he said well you know you'll have to forgive me but that's the only term i ever learned to describe a black person and so I just use it to describe a black person. I don't mean anything by it. Would you agree with me, Charlie, that there are people who in the South use that term and they don't use it out oh, yeah. of hatred? Yeah. Yeah, I lived in Texas for 40 years, yeah. You heard that word used in a, in a non-offensive uh, way? Like, not non-offensive, but a non, like, non, negative non in their mind? Not angry and not, it wasn't to put somebody down. No, wow. yeah, I, I've yeah. never heard it quite used that way in the north. Yeah, yeah. And well, I'll yeah, be honest. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest. Describe. The same thing. I have family members who use words like that. I grew up with words like that in my family, and uh, I'm appalled when I hear them. When I was young, I didn't know any different. Just same exact thing that Josh is saying. You know, yeah, you, you just I mean, right. That's the way. It's the way you were raised, and yeah. I still have family members now that I, I close family members, not immediate family, but aunts who still use the word, and they don't use it in a necessarily right. the same thing. They just use it as a label. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, 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 it's just it, you know. Br Bree had his hand up. Bree, terrible. Well, one of the things we were talking about in class this week is um, the old Disney movies. And the representation of gender, ethnicity, and uh, race. And if you look back at Disney films historically, they were pretty bad. Um, and they've they've learned in more recent times. They still engage in some of these, but uh, you know, time and taste standards change. So the question is, uh, should we no longer watch the old Disney uh, films? Do we have to get rid of them? All, you know, all and. I'll tell you another thing. If we go through every single leader in our country and we say we're looking for something that we can get them on so they have to move out, you'll have a situation like Virginia. Everybody has to go, you know, and we selectively do this mm -hmm. uh, because Trump gets to stay there. But, you know, anyway, for beauty, getting back to my original point, Beauty and the Beast can be interpreted as a tale of domestic abuse. And uh, in the Twilight series, I was showing Edward sneaks, the vampire sneaks in and watches Bella for, for months while she's sleeping and she doesn't know it. That's stalkerish behavior, you know? So it's all polysemic, meaning it can have different meanings. And in media, we generally say there are three types. There's a dominant, uh, dominant preferred meaning, there's a negotiated and there's an oppositional. So usually any type of interpretation comes within those three realms. So uh, you know what we're ha what we're dealing with right now is that it's a little conf it's a confusing time because you can find access to your other viewpoints very easily online, and so this supports you. Whereas historically, 
the dominant meanings were the and the preferred ones that were sent out by the companies or whoever had access the least right. those were the ones that that permeated that were out there but here on gapnet we can have citizens panel and we can say what we think and if we can gain support then you know we're more likely to move forward with that instead of spiraling into silence meaning if you know if you're in a crowded room and most people have a certain opinion uh, you were you were talking about how if you went to, to someone else's uh, house and they used that term that you know people didn't didn't sound it down that, that so that's part of that you know and as we go forward we we learn all these different ways to communicate and you know but do we get rid of all the disney films because we're judging them by today's standards well, yeah. I mean, I uh, uh, I use as an example. Um, uh, uh, well, I, I wrote an, an article for Hustler in my column. One of my columns was titled "Who Killed Uncle Remus," um, hmm. and it was about the fact that "Song of the South," which was a really great movie by Disney, uh, is not even uh, distributed in this country. Uh, and the fact is that the film is a loving tribute to the anti the south after the civil war and about whites and blacks getting together about a little black white kid whose parents are disaffected from him and he 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 seeks the the aid and affection of this black uh old black man named uncle remus and the film is there's nothing racist about about it except that they have these cartoon segments in which Uncle Remus is telling the story of Br'er Rabbit and how Br'er Rabbit was so smart that uh, to outwit the fox and the bear, Br'er Bear and Br'er fo Fox, uh, he built a tar baby, a baby out of tar. And when they tried to grab the tar baby, they got stuck in it. And, and they, they think the tar baby is some kind of racist uh, thing. And the fact is, if you've ever seen the movie, it's, a, it's probably one of the nicer, more tender uh, films that Disney made. And it went against his uh, anti-Semitism because he hired a Jewish writer to write it. And the actor who played it uh, was an actor who was an actor on Amos and Andy. And his name was, oh, what was his name now? I, I used to, you know, I'm, I'm blanking out on everything. But this actor has been completely erased from history. And he got an honorary Academy Award for that picture. Mm -hmm. He is the second black person in the history of the Academy to get an Academy Award, even though it was an honorary one because of his performance as Uncle Remus in Song of the South. Uh... You know, but Alex, is Thanksgiving racist? Is it racist? In what respect? It tells a story that uh, that children are told that uh, the, the colonists came over and the Indians came and fed them and everything was great and we all got along. That's the story we tell everyone on Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's not the truth. Right. That's, or, well... It may be partially true, but it's not the whole truth. It's not, it's not how it ended. By the way, the name of the black actor, I just had to look it up. His name was James Baskett. And he did the voice. He also did the voice of Br'er Rabbit in the film. And uh, he got an honorary Academy Award that year for his performance. Um, but his fine performance will never be seen in this country. It, you can see it in other countries. In other countries, they release it. And occasionally, you'll see him singing zippity doo -dah, because it won the Academy Zippy, Award for yeah. Best Song of the Year. Uh, and that they put on clips in like Disney compilations of like cartoons and stuff. And they'll, they'll show that clip. But the whole movie, you've got to go online to go find it. Because it's very hard. It, you can't get it in this country. And I think that there was something wrong with that. You know. Yes, Jeff. Well, I, I just to put a, just a little different spin on it, a friend of mine wrote a book for children mm -hmm. about racism. Mm -hmm. And she wrote it uh, with a Muslim child mm -hmm. who helped her write the book. Right. And, and then she had, to, in writing the story, a simple little story, they... She had to select somebody who was angry 
about the Muslim girl. Mm-hmm. So how do you say that using a white person to do it and not make them the worst, worst person in the world? So what they did is she created the dog to be the racist. <laughs> right? And yeah. I'll just show you guys. This is, I don't know how much you can see. Yeah. That's that's the... You know, Soulful well, Sydney. What's the rest of it say there? Explores diversity. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, now, I want to yeah. bring something up here because this goes... Anyway, so the big oh, thing oh, okay. that I just want to say yeah. is it's not just black people who have these problems. No. There's a lot more Muslim people in the United States than Jews the have this problem. Well, we used yeah. to have it for years, but... We're, well, we were we're white, so we're we could just, we could assimilate. We could assimilate. Was what, what what the assimilation was easier? You know, we could kind of pass for white, even though to a real racist, Jews are not passing for white. Uh, but I mean, we, we you know, uh, hey, every society has some people they hate because somehow it's endemic in the human psyche that we have to have somebody to put on a lower level than us. You know, and it's terrible. But let me bring up one other thing, because you see, here we are. We're discussing racism. And the other big racism story right now is Liam Neeson. Oh, right. Okay. Now, uh, Liam Neeson was being interviewed by, I think it was The Guardian in London, if I'm not mistaken. And he told the story about when he was a young man. And he said, I don't tell this story with any great joy. And he told the story about this woman who had been raped, who he knew. And then he asked her, well, who was it? And she says, it was this guy, he was a tall guy and whatever, and says, what color was he? And he said, she said, black. And he said, after that, he said, for a week, I was going out on the street with a club in my hand, waiting for the first black, and then he, supposedly, he can't see it in the newspaper, but he did the quotation sign. I was looking for a black bastard to 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 beat up. And then he goes on to say how, you know, that was a horrible part of his life and it's a horrible memory of his life. They're assailing him for it now. And he was telling the story as a point of education to people about yeah. how racism is bad and it was bad in his case and how he pushed through it. But had he not pushed through it, he might have wound up killing somebody. Right, which, which I think would be two things. Almost the same thing as if some people started calling in and assailing me for saying what I said 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Okay, because that's the same kind of point he was making. And then second of all, I work nights. I like to sit up at night and watch movies. Mm -hmm. So to all the liberals out there, you've already taken Kevin Spacey away. If you take away Liam Neeson, I have a specialized set of skills, and I will fucking find you, and I will fucking kill you. (laughs) That's really all I want to say. I'll join you. (laughs) Are you ready for this? There are calls for Liam Neeson to be digitally removed from Men in Black after his racist comments. Oh, <laughs> bullshit. This is true. This is true. Here, wait, social wait. media. It's social media. This wouldn't be a problem with if we didn't have social media. This is the upcoming Men in Black movie that he's in. And they, they want him uh, taken digitally removed from it. I mean... Uh, and then they uh, canceled him for doing a red carpet for his latest movie. And uh, he, you know, he, he, as I heard the remark, it was an object lesson he was trying to give. You know, and now his life is in ruin because everybody got so super sensitive about it. And they only heard that he used the term black bastard. You know, it's taken completely out of context. And because it was in print, and and they do have a video of it, but they don't show the video. He when he said black bastard, he did the quotes sign, okay. Uh, and uh, it, it it's just um, it's sad. <laughs> well, in Vir- in Virginia, that would be a kind way to put it. He could probably at least be their Secretary of State or something along those lines. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, <laughs> but we're so overly sensitive. You're right, Josh. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, who who did you say they got? Kevin Spacey. 
Yeah, so they already yeah. took Kevin Spacey away. I mean, okay, you, you can't have fucking Liam Neeson too. I mean, yeah, well, I yeah. I'll trade. I'll trade to you Kevin Spacey for your Liam right. Neeson. In fact, you can keep Bill Cosby. Okay, right. It's all right with me. By the way, it turns out that Bill Cosby is doing very well in prison. Is he? That he's very popular. They love him in prison. He does shows. Does he well, do because, shows? Well, because all these all these guys in prison guy. grew up with him on television. They love him. He's Uncle, you know, he's Bill Cosby from the Cosby Show. Hey, hey, hey! hey. A lot of the people that are in there are rapists too. So <laughs> yeah, they can, they can they can discuss business. Right. Uh, wow. wow, you know, I mean, uh, it it. Uh, it, it uh, that I heard is that he's actually he's probably getting along better in prison than he would have if he was on the outside. That's what the, they were saying. And uh, I understand from Bubbles that uh, Louis C.K. is selling out every venue he plays at because of the controversy. I mean, he can't make movies, and a lot of his income has been stifled. But nevertheless, he sells out. He said he, he was at the uh, San Jose <clears throat> Improv, I think, and sold out three shows. You couldn't get in. Yes, Bree. Uh, well, Alex, this is what I'm telling you about. This is the, the confusing state that we're in between interpersonal mass communication, uh, spiral of silence. There, there's all kinds of communication theories that we have that we've developed over many years, and they're all kind of being thrown for a loop because – there are a certain number of people, well, the, the, the same reason why Louis C.K. can sell out a club is the same reason why Trump is president. And why he can, because he has a base, there's a certain number of people, and the same reason why people like Bill Cosby in jail. There's a certain number of people for whom <clears throat> those other aspects are just not important. And they like the one that historically would have been the only thing they knew. Well, I, I, I feel sorry for Louis C.K., um, part of it is because I know knew Louis, and I liked him. He was a cool guy, but what he did was come on. He asked some women if he could pull his penis out. Nobody said no, so he pulled it out. You know, you, you could have left the room. You didn't have to stick around and watch Mister Winky come out of a guy's <laughs> pants for crying out loud. But, you, but I do think that Bree is right, though. Sometimes when there is just a certain number of people that like you, it doesn't really matter. I mean. It's the same way with athletes, you know. I mean, if you're really good and people really like you, and you know you're Ben Roethlisberger and you're the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you've been accused of rape like three times, and there's really nothing there to prove it. But it, it's like the the everyone else hates him, but the people who root for that particular team are like, yeah, we don't care about that. Yeah, R. I mean, Kelly too. Right, you know, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, R. I mean, R. Kelly, the, the the if you watch the documentary, the sick part of the of R. Kelly was all this was going on. Everybody knew it was going on. He even had a trial where he was found not guilty for the, but it was for the porno film. It was for the videotape. It wasn't for it was having sex with a girl underage. Uh, but with, all this was going on, and his record company wasn't doing anything about it. Why? Because he was making them a fucking mm -hmm. fortune. And they didn't want to screw the pooch. And the only reason why they've let him go now is because, this, A, this documentary came out, and he's not selling as well as he used to. Oh, that's really brave, RCA. Thanks a lot. Or Sony or whoever is the company that distributes his stuff. Um you know, I mean, he 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 was a creepy person then, and he's a creepy person now. But now, because he's not selling as well as he used to, I think it's time to get rid of him. Yeah, we're we're not going to release your records anymore. Uh, you know, uh, but all I'm saying is, what is that? What is the cutoff date? When well, can't we say that after a certain amount of years, you can't go back beyond that to try and get somebody on something? Statute of limitations, yeah. Well, it isn't even a question of statute of limitations. It's just a question of, you know. Not speaking I mean, figuratively. I mean, there are certain mores of a certain at certain time, and how long do you live with those mores, and how long do you go along with them, and, and whatever they imply. It's I, just. It's amazing that we have these we, – we're evolving as a society and you've got the Kevin Spaceys of the world and Liam Neeson who makes a statement. But yet we have the most egregious person in the White House. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable. It, yeah. But, see, that's that's where I stand with things. That's where I was with the Al Franken thing. I thought he should have just walked up and said, you know what? I'm going to be a senator until the day I'm voted out, and I don't give a hell what you've got on me. Uh, when Donald Trump resigns, 15 minutes later, I'll be gone. And until that fucking point... You can all kiss my fucking well, there, ass. There was part, there yeah, was, that's what the Democrats do. Yeah. There was part of me that was exactly really right. pissed at Al Franken when he quit. Right. Because yeah. he should have just fuck all y'all. I, all I, that was a gag picture. And if you want to hold some hearings, I'll be happy to talk in front of him. But I ain't gi giving up being a senator until the people of the state of, uh, of Minnesota that's say right. I no longer should be a senator. Okay? Right. And um, But he quit. You know, and I think part of him was saying, because he had been he had done other stuff in his life. You know, he'd been on TV, he'd been a comedian, he's been a movie writer, did a, he wrote books, he uh, he did all kinds of stuff, and I think he just looked at this and went, I don't need this shit. Right. You know, I mean, I like being a public servant, and I like helping to try and change the dialogue, but come on. You know, I don't need this shit. And Kirsten Gil Gillibrand, that cunt, right, should never be elected to anything, let alone the presidency of the United States, for what she did to Al Franken. She ate one of our own. She ate the best. Oh, isn't she hot? Uh, yes. one, of the, one of the best, and especially in white. Uh, when you see strong, what, what does it say there? When, when she, you, see, uh, you look at her. Ah, oh, boy. As, am I being sexist by saying she's hot? Uh, and you know why she's hot? She's hot for two reasons. She's good looking. She's got a nice frame on her. But more than that, she's no nonsense and she's smart. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a boner every time. You know? Uh, am I am I right, Bree? She's... Mm. Oh, you're right, Alex. I can't get enough of AOC. I mean, whatever she wants to do, I'm all for it. Do you do you do you realize? Do you Sign re me up. Do you realize how much of an impact this woman has made in just the short time, less than a yeah. month, that she's been yeah. in the United yeah, States it's Congress? Unbelievable. And it's because it was all there. That that message was there, but no one. There was no. Uh, sender, you know, to deliver it. There was no. The, the there message was, was there. Now the, they've got the sender. There was nobody there coalescing the message. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. for all the Republicans, and, and for all the Republicans that voted for Donald Trump that wanted that something different type mm -hmm. of politician, this, it, that is what they wanted. They wanted someone who was different, who actually had some sense, not yeah. someone who was different, who was just a buffoon. And I say that. Noting that, you know, I don't uh, even agree with everything that she wants, okay? But that doesn't mean because I disagree with someone on one thing or two things, I can't support them overall and their message. I mean, I'm not, you know, on her bandwagon, so to speak. Oh, she's just so, you know, I'm, I'm not worshiping her or anything. I mean, that is a fine-looking woman, I will say that. But, <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, but this is what they wanted, you know, in my opinion, was something more along. I mean, I just can't believe they couldn't have found someone within their own party that was that type of, you know, attitude and, and coming into town and, you know, uh, overturn the tables and burn the house down, but also, well, you know, was smart. Thank God Phil yeah, isn't here tonight because he'd tell us how much he hates her, you know. <laughs> uh, but that, I think a lot of the reasons that they hate her is because of that. Oh, they hate her because. Uh, here's the thing. Think about 10 years ago, Howard Schultz would have had all the time he wanted to talk about everything he wanted. But now, social media, YouTube, uh, all this and that, AOC and Twitter, AOC can immediately tweet, and essentially, his he can't run. I mean, but, but, you know... I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing Bill Maher, but he said, you know something, we didn't hear, know much about Howard Schultz or hear much about Howard Schultz, but now that we've heard heard from Howard Schultz, we definitely know he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he's backed away. Have you? We haven't heard. I haven't heard his name mentioned because, in uh, be, about a week. Because everybody's been putting him down to begin with. You know, he likes to say, you know, and I found uh, this market and I took it over and I turned it into Starbucks and I made it a success. He doesn't talk about his partner who started it with him. And, and that guy quit after a while because he couldn't stand being around Schultz, so he went and started Pete's. Wow. Yeah. 
Um, so, I mean, uh, it, it wasn't like he, he did it all by himself, but that's the way yeah. he remembers it, you know. So we need him in office like we've already got one of those kind of guys in office. Yeah. And yeah. I don't care if he's a liberal or not, you know. He was a liberal up to a point. He gave his people 11 bucks an hour. As a, as, as a wage. And when they wanted to raise it to 15 in the state of, uh, of, of Washington, he fought it. If he wants to be president so bad, then start and get into Congress first. Yeah. Work your way up. If you really want to be president, <clears throat> then show you want to be president. And I get don't think you have to work your way up. AOC was told that. But I do think that he, if he's smart enough, he would have gone for the Democrat nomination or the Republican. Well, he AOC, can't, he can't win as an a, a, AOC, is, a, AOC is working her way up. I mean, she's starting as a congressman. That's kind of the the you know that's kind of the uh, the entry point in politics. Yeah. Yes, there are local politics you can involve yourself in. Yeah. But he's he's he couldn't start he couldn't get the nomination for Democrat or Republican so this was his only way because yeah. he's not that well known and and he has no experience and he's not a you know Donald Trump is a television host is he's famous that's how he got as far as he did this other guy doesn't have the you know the cachet to do that so. If he wants to do it and he really wants to be president, then he needs to get into office somewhere and serve this country first and work his way to president. Trump didn't. Trump didn't because Trump was a reality TV host. He sat in a boardroom, looked really powerful, had all scripted, and, and everything looked great. So, so how are so Well, you know, we're sitting, we're, we're sitting around here as a bunch of smart people, and we'd like to think the rest of the country is smart. But really, if you look at the great breadth and width of America, most of them are stupid. Otherwise, this he guy... He's a TV show. Otherwise, right. otherwise, this guy wouldn't be president of the United States at this point. You know? Absolutely, and and it was stupidity that made him president. So what the hell, you know? Well, let me start running the theme here, Rob. You know you have a job now <coughs> to do a new a new uh, uh, imager, uh, so that we can say depressing going in the studio. Oof. I don't know what works and what doesn't. Well, all you got to do is find something You're that turns. To all you got to pl- do is plug a microphone into something and talk into it. Yeah, that's you, true. You know, so it's not a big this deal. This is the Alex Bennett rant. Yeah. Uh, because, on GapNet. Because there's nothing like your <laughs> voice for GapNet. Uh, it's Charlie Wallace. Thank you so much for joining us. Jeff Stein, you as well. Bree from du- du- Dubai. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's like you're next door. It's amazing. Rob Alfano, thank you so much. And, of course, Josh. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's so much fun that we've been having you on lately. Really, really yeah, enjoy appreciate it. appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, why don't you all guys, all, all you guys, wave goodbye to the audience out there, okay? There they go. And here's me waving back. Okay. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote. It's simple. It's, uh, and I'm getting the lines all ready for Jack Bishop, who is next. Uh, uh, excuse me. Wait a minute. I thought I uh, see. I'm I'm screwing up like crazy, folks. Uh, anyway, that's that's all all she wrote for the night. Oh God, I keep forgetting to push buttons, and maybe maybe it's time for me to pack it in. Well, at least for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next tomorrow night, 9:30. It's Damian Chaplin in the Exchange. 10 o'clock. I'll be back here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I'm losing my fucking mind and tell her I love her, okay? Okay.